Hey, welcome to the Bedley Brothers, hashtag EdChat. We are so happy to welcome uh, a special guest. I'm Scott Bedley. This is my brother, Tim. We're dedicated to bringing you some amazing educators out there with some innovative ideas. Tim, do you want to inter introduce our guest for today? Arr, me matey. I'd love to. We have with us very special guest, of course, Dave Burgess. He is a high school teacher, history teacher at West Hills High School in San Diego, a, an award-winning educator, nationally recognized author and speaker. He's the host of the TLAP chat on Twitter, Teach Like a Pirate chat, Modern Day Arr, Pirate, and a semi-professional magician and comedian, which means your jokes are half funny and the tricks <laughs> kind of half work, or what does that exactly mean, <laughs> semi-professional, Dave? Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's kind of like me. Well, he's semi nice. What is that? It's not, it's not very, a very high compliment, is it? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I consider myself to be semi in almost everything I do. Well, I, I totally messed up, Dave. I, I got a pilot's hat because I thought it was teach like a pilot, but no, I'm just oh, kidding. We know it's teach like a pirate, we, and we love it, and we're, we're, we're glad to have you here. Would you give us just a quick background on, on teach like a pirate and what, what you're up to? Yeah, absolutely. So Teach Like a uh, Pirate kind of started off as a, as a seminar, a workshop that I was doing. And I did that workshop for about five, you know, five to six, seven years, actually. And then finally broke down and said, all right, I need to put this into a book. So rather than write a book and then go around and speak about it, I was kind of the opposite. I was speaking about Teach Like a Pirate for a long time and then finally put it out to a book. And that's what I'm doing right now is traveling around and talking to as many groups of teachers as I can get my hands on and trying to spread this message. Wow, what a re rewarding experience to be able to do that. So um, the main message of the book is engaging students, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's how we can make school amazing and how we can become more passionate about our profession and uh, how we can become, become more creative and how we can kind of transform the way that we look at our job as educators and make it about something more than just test scores and content and all that and make it about rather than just raising test scores raising human potential which is what we're really here for and when you start to look at education like that then you have a mightier purpose and it's a lot easier to get pumped up about getting uh, going to school yeah Dave I really I, I love that message part of it and one of my beliefs kind of is that the standards that we've been wrapped under for so long as teachers really squash that creativity it took away our freedom and empowerment as teachers and we're in this really like this great precipice of, of opportunity switching to this common core to really innovate and create right now and I love that you're out there sharing this message of empowering teachers to be creative and uh, I love that piece of it yeah you know everywhere I've gone you know the morale I think has been for a while at kind of an all-time low and so this is a message that's really resonated with teachers and People are kind of sick of all that uh, focusing on kids is nothing but a number and it's the pendulum is starting to swing back the other way and it's it's something that's great to see. Now as I, I think about like different kinds of educators out there I know there are some that would just gravitate towards this message and then I, I know that there are others that might come up with a thought process of like is this a disservice to our students to just focus on uh, high engagement lessons when their future, their job, their bosses aren't going to be, you know, hey, I'm going to do a dance or I'm going to dress up in a costume. And I know that's not just what you're talking about as far as engagement. But, um, uh, you know, what, what do you say to those educators out there that are kind of concerned with that, that, that that doesn't necessarily prepare the students for real world for a college professor, you know, a large lecturer or things like that? Right. Yeah, well, see, I would say two things. First of all, um, I think that attitude kind of has this tone of like, hey, you know what? Life is going to suck for you later, so we're going to make sure that it sucks now too, so that you're ready for that. <laughs> um, and I don't, I don't buy into that at all. I think that making school amazing for kids, making it engaging, making it fun, and teaching them about a, or developing a love of learning and having them leave us with a sense that education is something they want to be a part of for the rest of their life. That's one of the most important things we do. And then the other thing I would say to that person is that I think that it's a false dichotomy that either you are uh, preparing kids for their future or you're entertaining kids. And I think that you can do both. So I think if you embrace the Teach Like a Pirate philosophy, you can absolutely 
uh, prepare kids for their future and also make school amazing at the same time. So I don't think you have to choose. So Great, basically, thanks. you're giving us like a, a one misconception of teach like a pirate. Are there others that you found and you've been traveling all over the nation and presenting to teachers, educators everywhere and, and giving this powerful message. Is there any other things that you've run across where people just don't seem to quite get what your what your message is through Teach Like a Pirate? Right. Well, you know what? One of the main things is is they they think that I'm just talking about kind of the accessories of teaching and the little side, you know, what you're doing on the side and all that. And and I think the misconception is is that those things are small, but those things are not small at all. And in and of themselves, any single part of the Teach Like a Pirate system might seem like it's kind of small. But nothing is in and of itself. It's all one big picture. And the way I usually talk about that is the three circles. You have your content circle. Hey, it's got to be there or you're just an entertainer or a babysitter. That's just not what I'm coming to talk to you about when I come and do a workshop. I, you need to know your content. That's not, just what, that's not what I'm there for. There's the techniques and methods that we all get in our education classes and all that. You have to have those too. But I'm there to talk to you about the third circle, and that is presentation. And once you have your content and your techniques, how can you present that to kids so that it will draw them in almost like a magnet and so they're going to receive what you're giving them or they're going to be engaged by what you're doing. So it's about that third circle. And it's not that I'm anti-content, anti-technique, you know, technique, or anything like that. It's just that I'm there to talk to you about something else, which I think is that nobody else is doing much of, uh, doing much to talk about. So give us two, like maybe two or three key ways that people could implement tomorrow in their classroom if they're watching right now, that would fit in and go online with what you're sharing in your book, Teach Like a Pirate. Okay, so one of the things I talk about is that it's kind of like when you are serving steak or barbecue to, um, to someone who's coming over to your house to eat, and you don't just serve them a, a raw piece of meat. You have to heat it up. You have to turn on the propane. You have to bring some heat to it. So you have to have some enthusiasm behind what you're doing. Not only that, you would also probably have some side dishes and some beverage, and maybe after all that, you would have a dessert. So those are the things that you add to your lesson that provide some richness and provide some of that engagement. And the, in addition to all that, you would also probably put some marinade on it, and you would put some rub and seasoning to make it more flavorful. And those are those things that we add to our lessons that make them fun and engaging. Um, and right on top of that, you wouldn't just put the steak down onto a cold grill. You would heat it ahead of time. So one of the things that I'm trying to convince teachers is that you have to do things even before your class starts that add a little mystery, a little intrigue, and draw people in, get a little heat on that grill. So what? how have you built it up ahead of time? How have you... What, as soon as they enter the room, what do they see? Is there something that's engaging them on the board or on the screen? Are, are they walking in saying, like, hey, how come the room is set up like this, Mr. Burgess? Or why, why did you write that on the board? I don't understand what that's all about. All these things are adding to your lesson. So it's not just too many people walk into class with just their steak. There's all these other things that make a meal, just like there's all these other things that make a lesson. Can you give us uh, one example, like as, as a high school teacher, what would you put in your room? What have you done that got one of the biggest reactions out of your students? Okay, so this is the difference between uh, teaching a lesson and creating an experience. If you walk into my class and I stand in the front and I lecture you about prohibition and speakeasies and all that, that's a lesson. If you walk up to my door, it's locked. You have to knock. And then the door slides open a little bit, and you see like a gangster zoot suit kind of guy <laughs> standing there. And you have to know a password to get in. And then you, when, you, when you walk in, it's completely dark and rearranged, and there's tables out. And then you look, and the, your eyes finally focus on the front, and you see a bartender with a, with a bar and cups and drinks. And you get it to go up to the bar and order a drink and then find your seat. That's an experience. So part of the Teach Like a Pirate system is, and all that's just even before the bell rings. So part of the Teach Like a Pirate system is adding these things on the top. So here's your lesson. How can you ramp it up to the next level and take it from a lesson to an experience? Because lessons are easily forgotten, but experiences live forever. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think back to my experiences in school, and the ones that are most memorable are the ones when there was something totally unexpected like that or that really connected you to the content area. I mean, it's, not, it's pretty easy to to disconnect from a book and just a lecture in those things. Um, so 
Right. Yeah, yeah. So, Dave, tell us, like, if you um, had to include some other things into your book that you may not have included, uh, is there anything else that you would have included into your book that now that it's published that you maybe share or that you would have liked to put in there? Uh, you know, one of the things that I always regret is that when I wrote the book, there wasn't a TLAP hashtag. And so the TLAP hashtag is not in the book anywhere. And what has happened with that has been absolutely and completely overwhelming and amazing. There is such a vibrant and positive community that has gathered around into the TLAP hashtag and into the TLAP chat. And uh, so it's, it's, it's been a source of inspiration for me, I know, and it's been a source of inspiration for a lot of other people because there are so many amazing educators tweeting into that hashtag and sharing and collaborating on ideas. So if I had to write it again right now, I would definitely uh, talk about that community and invite people to join that community. Cool. Hey, let me just ask you a practical question here, Dave. Uh, you know, I've read a lot of teacher books about wonderful ideas, you know, teach like your hair's on fire and end of the molasses classes and things like that. And sometimes when you read those, you just feel like, I can't do all that stuff. I mean, I'm already, Scott, I know, feels the same way. We're both just working our tails off, you know, spending way too many hours. So when you tell me an idea like, okay, let me turn my classroom into this, you know, a whole different world and the kids have to knock and I got this bar, I'm like, how am I going to get time to do that? So realistically, how often would you do something like that? And, you know, to put that kind of time into something, I just want to kind of make it so it's attainable and reachable for people that they don't feel like, you know, oh, I can't do all those things. Right. Well, yeah, so I don't have a speakeasy in my class every day for sure. Um, <laughs> this, part, part of this is answering this question. One of my two questions that I always ask teachers is, uh, uh, do you have any lessons you could sell tickets for? And so this is sort of like a bar-raising paradigm shift of a question. So not, not just is your class okay and kids are not being a behavior problem or that they kind of like your class. Do you have any classes that you could actually sell tickets for? And when I think about that, I kind of have a unit focus. And so I want to have at least something in every unit that I think I could sell tickets for. I want to have engagement and hooks and all of these things in every single class but then I'm really trying to knock their socks off at least once per unit. Um, so that kind of makes it a little bit more manageable. But all these other things, like the enthusiasm, the passion, the, the hooks, all those, those can be every day. But you're not going to transform your room into like a whole different world uh, 180 times or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Cool. Do you have any uh, upcoming projects, uh, something new going on at all? Well, you know what? I'm pretty excited because on Saturday, just two days from now, I'm going to be at Ed Camp San Diego. Woo. So I'm pretty pumped Woo. up. I am pretty pumped to see everybody at Ed Camp San Diego. And uh, we all, I also have some conferences coming up, the National Council of Social Studies Conference in St. Louis, a Learning Forward Conference in Dallas, and taking some trips to some schools in between there. So, yeah, but, hey, this weekend it's all about Ed Camp San Diego. Very cool. Uh, hey, Tim. It's tip time, bud. Well, before we do the tips, I brought my official pirate mug with me. <laughs> hey, and Dave, thank you, first of all, before we even do this, thanks so much for not only coming on and sharing and, and answering the questions, but also just offering up some gear for uh, the viewers and the people who tweeted in, and, and we really appreciate it, and, uh, we, and thank you. Oh, absolutely. My pleasure. So I can tell you what you can win. What's yeah, your, let's hear about it. No, I've got the mug here, so I'm going to try out two winners, right? Yeah, so you can win either your choice, a signed Teach Like a Pirate book, or if you already have the book, or if you prefer, you also can get a Teach Like a Pirate t-shirt, which on the back says, don't just teach a lesson, create an experience. So your choice, you can get the t-shirt, or you can get the signed Teach Like a Pirate book. Awesome. Oh, man, I should have entered this. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to pull out two names. We'll announce the winners right here, the moment that we've all been waiting for. Our first winner, they can choose between the two, is Tanya Kurt. Congratulations right, Tanya. to Tanya. Tanya gets to sound effects or anything? Uh, Say that again. Tanya is a true pirate, so I'm glad. That's, that's awesome. That's cool. awesome. Okay. And our, I'm scrumbling them up really good here. I'm not uh, playing any favorites. Got everybody's name on a slip of paper. And our second winner is <laughs> Janine Letford. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> She was right. a guest on our show, and she tweeted out uh, to win some gear. So, oh, nice! That, that sounds like an inside job to me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, She's an amazing music teacher. I'll tell you that for sure. Yeah. Oh, awesome! Hey, uh, Tim, it's tip time now, I guess, huh? Uh, tip time. Okay, is this something I just got? And I wish I could give credit to the person that tweeted it out, uh, but it's on Edudemic. They did an article. I don't know recently that uh, the, the Chronicles of Narnia book series is now available for free as audiobooks. Wow. And so I thought, whoa, that's sweet, because I'm actually right now reading The Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe with my kids. And so for some of my more struggling readers to be able to go and listen to that on audiobook for free, I thought that was pretty hot, because a lot of those audiobooks are, what, $25, $30 for free. Free? We'll, we'll put the, the link in the uh, show notes for that. And my tip uh, for today is uh, I got this from a high school teacher, Dave, and I used to teach high school for a few years. But uh, a great guy, uh, Jim Attenor, and he had these signs around his classroom, and I have them around my classroom now, and they say agree and disagree, and they also have strongly agree and strongly disagree, and then somewhat agree and somewhat disagree. And so I'll throw comments and statements out to the kids, and I teach fifth graders, and they have to go and then defend their position. So one of the parts of the Common Core are being able to defend a position. So in order to do that, I love to give them chances to debate each other. And then that's just kind of the kickoff to get them engaged. And then they may go and research and get actual evidence from actual real sources that are reliable to back up whatever argument they they have. So I love that, agree, disagree, just to give the kids a chance to move and share their opinions and talk and and make the classroom a little more engaging. So that's my tip for today. That's great. great. Yeah, thanks, Scott. And uh, again, Dave, thank you so much for coming on and uh, making a big deal out of it, too. You got the background, you got the gear awesome. on. It's awesome. Always in the pirate cave. Hey, thank you guys so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Looking forward awesome. to seeing you on Saturday, man. My pleasure, too. Okay. Right, thanks for uh, tuning in to another episode of Billy Brothers. See you, Mom and Dad. Thanks for watching, Mom and Dad. <laughs> <laughs>